Sunday for us because this is Love Sunday, right? And uh, the couples are taking charge of the worship services. So um, look at our praise and worship team uh, this evening. Um, they're all married. Okay. Before we start, um, can I just ask everyone to please uh, come forward? Uh, if possible, let us first. Uh, Fill up those uh, empty seats in front. Because usually there's a problem towards the middle of the worship. Uh, people are, are embarrassed to, you know, come forward. And so, okay, so why not just occupy the first few rows here? Right? And the like to ask the answers, please assist. Uh, there are still empty seats here in front. Let's fill it up first. Okay, so move. If possible, uh, occupy the those rows in the middle aisle because it will be very hard for the late numbers to fill it up. So as my empty on the sides. Right, very good. That's good. Uh, this this side is very cooperative. Very good. Here, uh, a little more forward. I can't forget to empty seats. Come on, you can do that. Yes. Wow. Come on. I have to move that. I have to move that. You know, see the Forward. Yes. <laughs> okay, 
Okay. Napagyan ko nila yung mga MPCs. So, uh, can I ask uh, Ryan and Joe's buddy? Okay, thank you. Na. Good. Good. Alright, so are we all ready for the worship? Already? <clears throat> Thank you so much. Happy Happy, happy Love Sunday to each and everyone. Happy Woo! Love Sunday. Okay, I would like to ask who among here was born the month of November? Can you raise your hand? November, the month of November. You know what? You were passionately made because you were born in November. But you know what? God is more passionate. God is more passionate. Why? Because of His love. Of color red. It is because that's the color of God's love. That is when He died on the cross. He shed blood to purchase each and every one of us. But this is the thing. Our God is not dead. Amen? Amen. God is reigning supreme. There in heaven. Come on, let us stand. And let us worship our God. <laughs> Oh, 
the reason why we are happy, the reason, oh God, why we are here, it is because of your grace. It is all because of you, oh God. Lord, I pray that as we are going to sing this song, I pray, oh God, that all of us will sing this as a prayer, as a love song towards our Savior, asking our God to just to make us fall in love deeper with Him. Lord, I pray that you would accept this love song as, you, as this congregation of Father God is sing as one in one accord. In Jesus' name. Amen. There is a longing only you can feel. A raging tempest only you can still. My soul is thirsty, Lord, to know you as I know. Drink from the river that flows before your throne. Save me deeper, deeper in love with you. Jesus, all we come to your embrace.
Thank you for loving us. Thank you for dying for us. For us. Lord, this is your time. This is, this is your place, oh Father God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At our church, Jesus is Lord. That simple belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a bright day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts, and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not in it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that will happen too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all, it's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church.
Sound check. Good evening. Today is uh, Sunday in our church, so I'm so blessed to see all of you uh, lovely faces. And uh, I'm sure you are so in love tonight. So why don't you greet the person beside you? I love you with the love of the Lord. And if you fail to you fail to greet your wife or your husband happy Valentine's Day yesterday, you can also do that tonight. Come on. Happy Valentine's Day and then please with a sweet kiss. Aww. Only for the married couple. Okay? Only for the married couple. Alright, so who are these people? You know, in my back. These are the members of the Bradford uh, Couples Fellowship. Okay? Uh, in our church, we have several organizations. We have for the youth, we have for senior citizens, and we have for young adults. And this Sunday, uh, the couples fellowship, they are in charge of the worship service. And so that is why uh, they have given us a beautiful edition of the 
song Love, okay? Inspired from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Okay? Are you in love with that song? Hello? Okay, so even the worship team coming from uh, the conference group. So this is Love Sunday in our church. All right, so you have your Bibles with you. Our text tonight is taken from the Old Testament. We are going to have a break. We are going to have a break of our God's grand story uh, for this special occasion of the Love Sunday of our church. We will resume next week, next Sunday, with God's grand story with part two of our of our series. Okay, Hosea. But still, our meditation for tonight is taken from the Old Testament. In Hosea chapter 3. Hosea chapter 3. Everyone would like to read verse 1 to 5. Right? May I request the congregation to please stand as I read God's word. The Lord said to me, Go show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves Israelites. Though they turn to other gods and love the sacred reason cakes. So I bought her for fifteen shekels of silver, and about the homer and about the mythic of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me for many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will live with you. For the Israelites will live for many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or idol. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. Let's pray, Father in heaven. Bless us now, Lord, as we are about to listen to the exposition of your sacred word tonight. May our hearts and minds be teachable. Plant your seed, Lord, into our lives so that it will grow and it will bear fruit of righteousness and holiness that we may serve you with our lives and that you will be glorified with it in jesus name amen please take your seats <clears throat> all right so uh, this is love sunday and uh, we're going to talk about marriage today okay uh, who are married couples here okay legally Okay, to a you know to an authorized organizing officer. Again, can you see the hands of those married? You get that feeling married, huh? Okay, good. Now who among us here tonight are planning, planning, you know, to get married? Okay, raise your hand. Okay, some of you are still in denial. Okay, okay, can you see? Planning. Okay, good. No, no, higher. Okay. Higher, higher. Are you sure? Okay, this year, not this year. Okay, thank you so much. Now, the reason why I asked you to raise your hands about those signals there who are praying on you that they would stop dreaming. Okay? They would, they would really see it all pink and then, you know, there are still so many uh, eligible bachelors here. All right, we're going to talk about marriage, and uh, I'm just so excited. Uh, this week, we are going through biblical portrait of marriage, uh, our prenuptial seminar for those who will be married uh, this month of March, April, and May. And I have six pairs. Wow, so I have six pairs half of the year, right? So again, uh, if, if you are planning, Okay, if you are planning to get married this year, 
please see me immediately. Please don't see me after you have already booked your, you know, your uh, reception and so on. And then the last thing we book, the inyong solemnizing minister. Okay? Can you leave available and schedule? No, no, it's so hard to look for a, a minister to solemnize. So make sure that the first step, okay, of course, of course, is to pray. And then go to the church, ask for a schedule. Okay, so that we can help you in your preparation. Okay, do you think that helps? Rex, that helps? Right, good. So starting over again, that's our message. Okay, starting over again. And this message has nothing to do with the movie that was shown last year, or was it last year or last last year? Last year. Is it a galato? Okay, see? Oni and Yolo. Okay, anybody know here Hosea? Please Hosea? I am a Yolo Oni. <laughs> May lang mong artista sa Bible ko na kiba ako. Oh, oh, ano ang tingo? <laughs> right. So this has nothing to do with the movie. This is something to do with our theme. Okay? We're talking about love. And we're going to talk about a different kind of love. But you know what? When people are in love, they do crazy things. You agree? Okay, what's the craziest thing you've done, you know, for love? Like, look at these people. These are some of the things that uh, people do. Oh, hindi na Okay, but we have our own version here. I think nobody did it in John the Bay using the. So if you're planning, invite your, you know, your your fiance to a Jollibee party and he come to my passport. Uh, I have an idea. Okay, how about this? Oh, a parking lot. Okay, and Harry, will you? Will you marry you? Okay, or how about this? Well, this is so common already you know, in public places, in plazas, in the mall. Or maybe you know, during some tour, or oh, you have to hire some tours. This, this will cost you extra money. Okay? City Kula. Or what about this? Okay? Bring your fiancé to, you know, the sky and make sure that you're on the right side of the field. Otherwise, mabali na siya, no? Kung mabali mo na siya, ang pagbasa na niya is, Anaoj, M Ira um, Lil. Right? So, so it needs some skills. Right? And of course, wow. So from 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 those crazy moments then comes you know the I do's. Okay, and soon some of you here will be changing your your status. Okay. And the problem is that after after the, the ideal, you know, the ideal wedding, the ideal man comes the ordeal. Right? Things like this happen, right? And from here, what what's next? Broken heart. And sometimes you have to make sure you have to put some chains there in order for that broken heart not to really shatter. Okay? Why do you think all these things happen? Well, because, because we want to love, and sometimes loving is, is a risk, right? Now, what is really marriage love, right? Some people say that, you know, I'm so in love with this person, and, you know, you have that feeling, you have that passion, but soon, when the feeling is over, when it's, you know, it's fading, it's gone, that doesn't mean that marriage is also gone. But a lot of people today think of marriage that way. Like, you're married to that person as long as you find that person beneficial to you. As long as you are satisfied, as long as you're happy, as long as, you know, the passion is there. But as long as the passion is no longer there, then people, you know, try to think for another deal. 
So from the ideal, an ordeal, then you look for a new deal. But it doesn't have to be that way. What is love then? Okay, what is marriage? Okay, first and foremost, we need to understand that marriage is not perfect. There are no perfect marriages, there are no perfect husband or wife, and there are no perfect couple. Okay, and you see those lovely couples? You know, here in the church, I want you to look at them. You know, they're so lovely. Here, see them? They're not perfect. Okay, think they're perfect? Me? No, very far. Okay, another thing, Marriage love is not passion. Some people think that it's just emotion. It's, it's just emotion. Okay? No, no, no. Because if we think of love as just passion, but let me tell you, what about when you are already 85 years old, you know, 90 years old? You know, there's, there's no more emotion there. Sometimes everything there is so mechanical, right? Like I've, I've seen senior citizens eating. I, at the wedding, I always use this as an illustration. You know, they're eating in, in Jollibee, and one is eating and the other one is waiting. And you know, you, you could not see love there. It's, it's like, you know, the guy is so selfish, he's eating and, you know, the lady is just watching. Okay, but actually there, there's love, you know? Mom, are you okay? I mean, sir, what are you doing? You're eating and your wife is just watching. And uh, the old lady said, oh, it's okay. I'm just waiting for the teeth, you know, we share. <laughs> so after, after it's done, then it's my turn. You know, we share. That's love. Okay? There's no emotion there, but there is still love. You know why? Because love is not perfect, it does, it's not passion, because it is a promise, right? It is a promise. In fact, the, the, the best thing in, in a wedding ceremony, it's, it's not the, you know, the, the entourage, it's not the beautiful ladies, no. It's the I do part. Why? Because that's the very heart of being married. You are promising, you are making a covenant to a person, and that covenant must not be broken. No sickness, no poverty, no storms in life should ever break that promise. The Bible says only death. That's a promise. Now, I like to go uh, Dr. Frank Pittman is a, a well-known family therapist uh, in, in the States. And his, you know, his passion is really to help married couple, you know, pursue intimacy, pursue purity, and, you know, make sure that marriage are intact, families are intact in the States. And this is what he wrote, okay, about, you know, his married life, you know? talking to his wife. I married you because you gave me a promise. That promise made up for your faults. And the promise I gave you made up for mine. Two imperfect people got married and it was the promise that made the marriage. And when our children were growing up, it wasn't a house that protected them and it wasn't our love either that protected them. It was that promise. And you know, Dr. Pittman really got the idea of what biblical marriage is. It's not about the emotions, it's not the passion, but it's the promise. Amen? Marriage is a sacred promise. In other words, those of you planning to get married this year, if you cannot make that solemn promise to live your whole life, committed to just one person for your whole life for as long as God will give you, you know, life. If you cannot do that, then please don't get married yet. Why? Because it's supposed to be a lifelong commitment. Even if the spark 
is long gone. No more spark, you know? Okay, how many of us here married couples here in the choir? You know, no more spark. <laughs> <laughs> the only spark that comes out, katong mga spark coming from places, you know, unwanted things. Mga spark. Okay? Praise God. Uh, mga spark, kani sila. Okay? Now, even if those things don't happen anymore, like what I said this morning, before uh, your wife looks at in the mirror, and usually the mirror, the man has mga cabinet, no? And then you look at the mirror and you know you see there, wow, that's my wife, so sexy, so beautiful, no? Mukanta ni ka mukanta ni mong wife, mukanta ni ka bini bini sa no? Ano ba? And then many years after. Nagtanaw siya sa cabinet, you know, you look at the woman of your life and suddenly you're not sure which one is your wife, the cabinet or your wife. No offense. Okay. No, sometimes like that, huh? but I'm so, I'm so blessed to see couples, even at their, you know, past 80s, still holding hands. Amen? We have... We have the, you know, uh, the Montilla couple here, you know. I don't know, sir. You're on your 70s, right? Okay. And yet, you know, they hold hands together going to church every Sunday. Wow. Praise God. It's a blessing. And again, why do we talk about these things here in church? Because we believe that marriage is sacred and this church upholds marriage. The marriage between a man and a woman only, exclusively. Okay, no other. It's only between a single man and a single woman. That's what the Bible says. For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. All right? But our passage tonight is quite unique. This is not the usual love story that we know. You know, this is not the usual love story that we love to hear. This is very peculiar, very strange. And this is the story of a man by the name Hosea, who was commanded by God to marry a woman whose name was Gomer. Even the name is so strange. The name is like a man's name, Gomer. Okay, so it's a main nickname, I think, yeah, no? Okay. Joe, you see go. Hosea or see Gomer, right? Gomer, by the way, means perfect. But this marriage is definitely not perfect. Now, what's what's the story here? Okay, let, let's go to Hosea chapter 1. When the Lord began to speak to Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. Wow. So this is the love story. And you know who is Hosea. Hosea is a prophet of the Lord. Okay, Hosea is a prophet to Israel. Now, this is before the time uh, Israel was destroyed by the Assyrians. Okay, so Hosea was preaching to the nation of Israel. Israel is now widespread with idolatry. Okay, and God is asking him, Hosea, okay, you're a holy man. You're the preacher. I want you to get yourself a prostitute and marry. And this is not just, you know, getting someone, you know, he's supposed to really fall in love with this woman, right? For like an adulterous wife, this man is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. And notice verse 3. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Right? So they had... They had a normal marriage. You know, a man falls in love with a woman, takes care of her, makes sure that, you know, he could provide everything so that this woman would not look for other men. But the Bible says he was to take a promiscuous woman, a prostitute, and a daughter. In fact, Hosea, you know, had three children with 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 Gomer. The first one, what's the name of the first one? Okay, 
Jezreel. And it, why Jezreel? Because God says it reminds them of the massacre then in Jezreel. Second, Lo Rohama, which means no more love. And God says, why call your, your daughter Lo, Lo, Lo Rohama? Because I have no more love with my people. They have, they have broken my heart. They have they've been pursuing idols and worshiping idols, and I'm just so crushed in my heart. And then the third son, what's his name? Lo Ami, meaning to say, not my people. Lo Ami, not my people anymore. God is saying, enough is enough. You know, you are no longer my people, and I am no longer your God. So imagine, you know how strange this marriage is? Hosea, supposedly in our modern practice as a pastor, marries a prostitute. Just imagine the news at the time, no? Imagine Israel Daily News. Here's, here's the headline, local pastor dating a prostitute. Isn't that so scandalous? Not to mention the names. The names of their children reminds them of God's bitterness, God's broken heart. And that's the life, that's the marriage life of Hosea. Okay? It's not easy. It was painful. And it was so strange. And when God asked him to do that, I'm sure Hosea was, you know, wondering and, you know, he was so puzzled. The same thing Abraham, you know, probably felt when God asked Abraham to offer his son. And now, me, Lord, a prophet? Of all the women in Israel, you want me to take a prostitute? Now, of course, we know that God wants to make a point. This is very strange command of God. Sometimes God does strange things to make a point. And what's his point? I want you, Hosea, to feel, because you are the one preaching my word. I want you to feel the pain that I have inside of me. When my people, Israel, worship other gods, they are like my wife committing adultery with other women. And it crushed my spirit, according to God. Hosea, I'm sorry if it will crush your spirit, but I want you to love that woman the same way I love you. Right? You see, we find in this relationship an unconditional love. It's so hard for a man to fall in love with a dirty woman, but love is unconditional. That's real love. And then we come to chapter 3. Okay, so what happened in between? This is what happened in between. Okay, along the way, of course, they were married. Hosea tried to really love. They, Hosea tried to start a normal, a normal godly home even though his wife is an adulterer. But you know what happened probably after many years? After the third son, you know what happened? Gomer abandoned, you know, her husband. She abandoned. She went with another man. Okay, one man, and probably one of those guys, my friends, come with me. He was there. And you know, the pain, it's so painful. Okay, it's okay. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure some of us here could relate to that. The pain of being betrayed by the person that you love. And here's the strangest thing. In chapter 3, this is what God commanded to say. Are you following? The Lord said to me, go show your love to your wife again. Okay, I want you to focus on that word again. So probably, probably because of the hurt, the bitterness, the pain, Hosea, what? Hosea simply, you know, call it quits. You know, no more, no more. I don't want to be hurt. Right? Same with a lot of women, a lot of wives. Pastor, I don't want to be hurt anymore. Bahala na Okay, and probably that's what Hosea did. All right, cut off the, the feelings, you know, no more. But notice the command of God. Hosea, go show your love to your wife again. Why? 
Again, we go back to the foundation of marriage. Even if there is no more feelings, even if there's so much pain and bitterness, God is saying, Hosea, that's part of the promise you made. When you were making your vows to God, you said, in sickness and in health, you know, through riches and, you know, poorer. What else? What else? Bitter? No, better. Better or worse. You see? In other words, our covenant of marriage is supposed to what? To withstand all kinds of storms in life. The covenant is not only for good things, and that includes sin. Right? And here, Gomer committed the most painful sin in a marriage life, unfaithfulness, infidelity, loving someone aside from your spouse. Love your wife again, all right? Now what is God telling us? What is God teaching us? You married couples who are here, praise God, some of your marriages are so good, healthy, but for some, you are struggling. What is God saying to you tonight? Okay, here's the first thing you need to understand. Marriage is a promise that's willing to sing out no matter how far the damage has gone. That is what God is teaching Hosea. And that is what God is teaching us all today. Not only to the married couples, also to those who are planning to be married. Don't ever think, you know, that your husband or your wife is going to be perfect, is going to be okay all the time. No. Remember, your spouse is as sinful as you are. Amen? I'm a sinner. Anyone, everyone else here, we are all sinners. And one day we are going to fall into sin. But that is part of the marriage life. Because marriage is about the willingness to seek out. And that is what God is commanding Hosea. Hosea, you know, you are not yet done with your marriage. Yes, your wife has sinned against you. Your wife slept with several men. And I know it breaks your heart. Why? Because I know the feelings. That is what I felt also when you people abandoned your faith in me. It broke my heart. But love tries to seek out. Amen? That's why God is commanding Hosea. Hosea, go back. Go. Now, where is Hosea going? Where? In the marketplace where, what? The slaves are sold. Why? So what happened? Probably after going through from one month to another, nobody wants to take this woman again, over. And so he, she is now in the market, you know, in the market, a place where slaves are sold. And they are now, you know, he, she's now on sale. And nobody tries to buy her. Nobody is interested with her, with her except the man that she married. You see, friends, it was already painful for Hosea to be left by his wife or other man. It was more painful for him to seek her out in the slave market. You know, he was already crushed. He was already hurt. But for God to say, oh no, Hosea, I want you to go the extra mile. Go. Go there. You know, and, and probably the, the auctioneer, they were already saying, okay, 15 shekels. Anyone? And nobody. And suddenly you say, me? Really, sir? You know, you like this? This is good for nothing. Yeah, I'm going to buy that because that's my wife. It's so painful, the embarrassment. Okay. But that is real love. Real love is willing to be hurt for the good of the one you love. That's real love. God is saying to Isaiah, Isaiah, if you are not going to pursue her, she's going to hell. And that's not love. See? 
Love is seeking out those people that we love and save them, right? That's the same thing with God's love for us. Why? Because it's a promise. Remember, Hosea, you promised. I didn't promise you, Hosea, that your marriage is going to be okay. No, but I did promise that I'm going to be there. Hosea was so hurt. Hosea was broken, yet God was with him every step of the way. Amen? It's a promise. So Hosea was was to show Gomer that a relationship was still possible, not on the terms of her present condition, but on his promised covenant. Friends, I want us to see the reality here in our lives because the life, the love story of Hosea is just an illustration, a painful illustration. But the story is this. God didn't wait until we clean up from the mess of our sins. We, we, we are the Gomer. God is the Hosea in the story. You know, we, we went our own ways. We followed our own selfish inclinations. We pursue evil. We pursue the idols in our lives. And we abandoned our first love, Jesus Christ. But you know what? God could not afford to leave us in the slave market of sin. That's why, that's why Jesus Christ has to come. Amen? And God did not wait for you to become clean, for you to become a saint, and then pick you up. No. Remember? Hosea did not say to the Lord, Lord, no, 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 Lord, I will not go. I'll wait here. You know, let, let her change her life first. You know? And then come back and probably I'll, I'll take her. No. That is not what God did. Jesus Christ did not say, oh, you know, you have to clean yourself, people. I'm just, I'll just wait here in heaven for you. No. The Bible says God didn't wait until we came calling back to him before he reached out to us. Why? Because he came to save and to save while we were still lost. Where were you when God found you? We were not in the Bible study. We were there. We were playing with sin. We were all sinners when Jesus Christ saved us. You see, that's that's the goodness, that's the greatness of grace. Grace is not, you know, Jesus Christ is not making some conditions. All right, you know, you have to clean first your life before I will die for you. No. The Bible says. God demonstrated his love for us while we were still sinners. Jesus died for us. He came. God pursued you and pursued me when I was in my lowest. You see, when Hosea took Gomer there, she was already at the bottom of her life. In other words, she was already helpless. Nothing will happen to her unless Hosea would come. The same thing with you and me. Nothing will happen with us unless Christ came down. He became a man and died on the cross for us. That's the story, my dear friends. The story of, of Hosea and Gomer is the story of God's love for you and for me. That God did not wait in heaven for us to reach and grow to heaven. No. While we were already wallowing in sin, He came down. That's love. That is love. God so loved the world that He came. So in marriage, marriage always seeks to preserve the relationship that is broken by sin. So for all of us here, those of you married here, and you know, your, your marriage today is no longer as sweet as 15 years ago or 20 years ago. Your marriage today is no longer sweet, but it's more on sweet and sour. Sometimes sweet, sometimes sour. Your marriage is like that. And you're about to let go, right? But the reason why God brought you here to not, because it is never God's will that you let go of that marriage. 
when you stood there on that altar and said, I do, God was listening. And right now, God sees your struggle, your pain with your husband and your wife. God can relate with you. Why? Because it happened to him with his nation, Israel. They adulterated themselves with other gods and it hurt God. And so, you know, a wife whose husband is womanizing and vice versa, a husband whose wife is, what's, is there a word as womanizing? Oh, what, what standard is the double standard? All right? God can relate. So this is my encouragement to those of you grieving wives or grieving husband. When your partner is cheating on you, you know what? You are at the exact point where God can actually relate with you. Why? Because that's the love of God. He has been cheated for many years. And yet he never stopped pursuing us. That's our God. He deserves our love. He deserves our faithfulness, my friends. In fact, the Bible says, when we were unfaithful, God remains what? Faithful. Second lesson, marriage is a promise that is willing to sacrifice no matter what the cost. That's the second lesson we can learn. And this is taken from verse 2. Look at what happened to verse 2. So, what's the first command God gave to Hosea? Go to your wife, you know, She's now being sold in the market marketplace as a, as a slave. Take her, pursue her, get her back, win her back. The second thing is this. Look at verse 2. Yes, Lord, it's easy for me to go there. But the question, where will I get the money to pay? And look at what the Bible says. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a over and a lepid of barley. They take them the egg. Right? I don't even know. I'm not going to know. But, okay, let's try to let's try to analyze this one. What is exactly is the worth of a slave? Right? In Exodus, the, the worth of a slave is 30 shekels of of silver. Right? And if you are going to if you are going to count the the silver, the homer, and the barley, actually, it's the total there is 30 shekels. And 30 shekels, at that time, is almost one year salary of a man. And Hosea is just a prophet. Okay? Not the P-R-O-F-I-T. Lying in English, a prophet. Nami mga preachers na tako prophet. But Hosea is the real prophet of God. Not for the profit, right? So he has no money, okay? So imagine where will Hosea get the 30 shekels of silver? And I don't know here if there's some symbolism here, but 30 shekels of silver, isn't that also the 30 pieces of silver that was used to betray Jesus? I don't know if there's a, you just do the connection. But the point is this. He sold, he literally sold everything that he got. In other words, when Hosea left home and went to the marketplace to buy Homer, there's no home left. He sold everything. In other words, the value of Homer is as good as everything that he has. And he's willing. That's what this love is all about. Imagine the love of this guy. Do you think Gomer deserved even a penny? You know, if if that's me, and during our time, bala ka de azaro. Okay? You don't deserve five centavos. You hurt me so bad. All right? And you know, when God's love is there, when God's grace is there, you are willing to sell everything. See? That's the point here. That I want you to see the love of, of, of Hosea here. He was so hurt by this lady, and yet he is willing to sell everything to get her back. Again, a picture of what 
Jesus did for you and for me. The same thing. That's what we call crazy love. Okay, let me give you, let me share with you. This is just an, you know, an allegory. Okay, this is not true. Okay, thank you, Pastor Lance, for, you know, mentioning to me. Okay, let me just give you an allegory of what happened in the Bible. Okay, let's just say that, okay, all the people, when, when Adam and Eve said, we were all, you know, we all became slaves to save life. Because I'm saying we were all bound in sin, right? And we, you know, Satan is simply playing with us. And one day, one day Jesus Christ, remember this is just a story, okay? One day Jesus Christ passed by and he said, uh, Satan, what are you doing? You know, I'm just playing with these people that, you know, your father created. What are you doing? No, I, I, I teach them how to kill each other. I teach them how to deceive each other. I teach them to fight, I teach them to hate, I teach them to fool each other, you know, fall in love, and then, you know, it's not true, hurt them, and that's what I do. And, you know, Jesus said, you know, my father loves his people, okay? What will it cost me if I'm going to buy them? And Satan says, you don't like these people, Lord. You know, if you buy them, they will just hurt you. You know, they will only like you for what you can do for them. But if you're going to bless them, I tell you, they will forget you. They will just reject you. They will just commit so many sins and they will just hurt your heart. They are not worth for anything. And Jesus says, no, you know, my father created them in our image. I, I could not, you know, I could not allow them to be, you know, played by you, Satan. And so tell me, what's the cost? I want to set them free. And, you know, they were arguing, you know, Lord, you know, you will just regret it. These people, when you save them, they will just make you cry. In fact, they will just lead you to the cross, Lord. No, no, no. How much? And of course, Satan was calculating, okay, okay, if I'm going to collect, you know, the whole universe, well, it's not easy, God can always create a new universe. If I'm going to ask if they give me the whole company of angels, well, okay, it doesn't hurt God. So Satan was looking for something that would really hurt the feelings of God. Okay, you really want to save these people? Okay your life your life for their freedom your life for their salvation and you know Jesus Christ without any hesitation said deal and so one day Jesus Christ was hanged on the cross he was hanging on the cross and you know when when Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross he knew the rest he was doing he knew that the very people that is going to love will hurt him he knew that the very people that he's going to save will disobey him, will hurt him again and again and again. Yet Jesus Christ took the risk because that is love. Because that's the love of the Father. Because that's the plan of the Father. What is the plan of the Father? Son, let's save them. They're worth dying. How many times, how many times did we neglect to see the love of God? We ignore His love. We simply do, you know, our thing, you know, we sit here, we sit there, as if, you know, God is not hurt. But no, I want you to understand the, the, the love story of, of Hosea and, and Gomer here. Hosea really loved his wife. His wife does only one thing, hurt his husband. But in spite of that, Hosea sold everything, you know, went to the marketplace and bought her back. The same thing with God and with you and with me. Jesus Christ sold everything. In other words, he left his glory in heaven. Imagine he is God, but 
accept Jesus Christ now. Gisampa lang siya sa tanan ng mga Pharisees. The Pharisees spit on him. Soldiers mocked him. They scourged him to death. And he's not an ordinary man. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. But what were the words of Jesus Christ when he was dying on the cross? It's not one day all of you will pray, no. But tayo lang mo. Magawas niya kong power ka ron. Mahimo kong batong ka na. No! You know, what went out from his mouth is the words of love. Father, forgive them. Because they're blinded. And we allow ourselves to be blinded by the devil. And God is offering his great love for us. Dear friends. Brothers and sisters, please don't ruin your lives. Don't allow Satan to blind you from the truth. God is reaching out to you. And his love is willing to sacrifice everything just for you and me. Just for you and me. To have the freedom. Amen? That's the love of God. So when we celebrate Valentine's Day, it's more than just, you know, spending time with your loved ones. Because I'm sure, I'm sure in the world, you know, it's, 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 it's in the statistics. So many babies are born November. Okay lang kung married. But so many babies, unwanted babies. Just imagine how many of them even don't don't make it to the labor of why because they are aborted. Because of that thing called love on the right of me. See? Friends, get the real meaning of love from the word of God, not from you know what the world is trying to pay. See, when you want to talk about love, look at the cross. Because that's love. Jesus paid the price for you and for me. Just for us to be reunited back to him. And you know, to finish the story, Satan laughed, ha ha. You know, you know, this Jesus is stupid. Okay? You know, he gave up his life for this, and I won. But no, why? Because after three days, Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. And he gave us victory. See? So Satan failed. Satan is not the victor. Jesus is. That is why if you are going through some struggles in your life, maybe in your marriage right now, you know, you don't know, maybe you're the Gomer or maybe you're the Hosea. I don't know. But the important thing is this. God is the God of love and he wants to save your marriage. And this is not only for the, the married people, right? I, I know more than 50% here are singles. This is also a reminder to all of you singles. All right? Don't get a prostitute unless God commands you, all right? <laughs> unless you hear the word of God. You know? God only asks Isaiah to do that because he wants to make a point. My point is this. A lot of our married couples, not just in this church, but even outside, they're struggling with it. Why? Because of their some wrong choices. Not following the instructions of God. Don't make that mistake. You see, it's so hard for them to get out of that marriage for some legal reasons. You know, it's so hard to, to get a divorce, to get annulment, to get separation in the Philippines. It's so hard. My point is this, don't enter it unless you are ready, okay? I think it's in Song of Solomon's, Song, Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse, what verse is that? Chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 6, do not awaken love unless it so desires. If you are not ready for it, don't enter. Okay, kung mo enter na ka na, kaya magpa-counseling na ka mo, kinakasutin yung nanong ni enter. Okay? But you know, we have so many counseling sessions in our church, but I tell you, I tell you, 
God is so gracious. You know, I've seen God doing miracles in broken marriages because that's the work of God. Amen? He's a healing God. He's a restoring God and that is His love. Crazy love. What's crazy love? It's a love that's willing to sacrifice, do whatever it takes to win back the person. Are you married to someone who is like a homer? You know, be willing to sacrifice. Pastor, even if I'm going to cry every night, yes, that's part of the covenant. That's part of the promise. In fact, Jesus Christ himself, look at, look at what Paul said about God. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Even the father did not spare his son. In other words, the father took risk when he gave up his son. But that's love. Amen? For God so loved the world that he gave. What are you willing to give up to save that marriage? Finally, number three. Marriage is a promise that's willing to start over again. So here's we get the title, not from the movie. If there's a starting over again, it's not what Star Cinema is doing, it's what the Bible is doing. Amen? Marriage is a promise that's willing. Never say never, never say last and not known. There is no such thing as last and not. As long as God can provide you grace, as long as God can sustain you, you can start over again. You can give that marriage another chance. All right? Look at verse 3. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will be with you. You know what, what Hosea was saying here? First, he went to the slave market, you know, get back his wife, and now his wife is there. Wala niya din dito na ikaw, ha? Kung matawag niya, mawa na yan? Wala! No! Say, lana ko tapong, palit niya din! Di palit niya din ka! Okay? No. Notice what Hosea did. Okay? This is what Hosea did. He was renewing his covenant. Gomer, Gomer, I love you so much. No? You hurt me, but I'm willing to be hurt because I love you. You don't have to say for other men, I will be like so many men for you. That was saying. You don't have to be a prostitute, you know? If, if one man is not enough, I can be five men at the same time for you. That's what he, he did. Okay. And he said, I will live with you. You don't have to hop from one house to another because I will try to be the man that will love you, that will take care of you. That's what he did to his wife. Okay? Let's see the three steps of Starting over again. First, residence. Say something, yeah? You are to live with me many days. Or many days, in other some page, you will live with me all the days. In other words, be back with me physically. So there should be physical, re, you know, reunion. Next, repentance. All right? There should be repentance. You know, Gomer could not just go back to the house and then as if nothing. No, she has to learn that what she did is wrong. All right? We have to realize that we have hurt our spouse and above all, we have hurt God. Infidelity is a sin. In fact, adultery, immorality, it's the worst sin second only to idolatry. Those two sins, immorality and idolatry, these are the two sins that burns the wrath of God. You know why? Because those sins have something to do with relating to God. Idolatry, you are substituting him with another God. Adultery, it reminds God of what Israel did to him. So it still goes back to idolatry. 
So friends, residents, repentance, and then this is what Hosea said, you must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man. Why? Because I'm going to fill your cup. Maybe before there was a void and you think that other men could fill up the void. I will fill that up for you. That's love, my dear friends. Starting over again. Willing to start over again. Your past may be painful, listen to this, but it doesn't have to be the present. Right? It doesn't have to be the present. Forsake the past. Next, the romance. Wow. And this is this is what we love, right? Wow. There's the love again. So we must say you say rumor. And then you know, touching her face. All wrinkled. And then Hosea, Boomer, Hosea, Boomer, Hosea. Okay, what's the third part? I will live with you. So we need to say, Hosea, say to Boomer, you know what? You don't have to be live with me. Let's, you know, let's get old together. Okay? And let me paraphrase what Hosea said to his wife. I love you more than I did before. That's what he said. Okay. If I love you when you hurt me, I love you more when you're back. Okay? Every marriage deserves a second chance. Amen? Amen. Because the marriage of everyone is a reflection of our relationship with God, okay? So, do we have the married couples here? I want you to look at your spouse right now and tell that spouse, no? With, with a sweet look. Okay? And tell that spouse, I love you more today than yesterday. Oh! Who's my wife? Here, I love you more today than forever. Right? Let's wrap this up. Right? Because we're going to sing the song. You know? We could not sing it this morning. Allow God's crazy love. Listen to this. I know it's it's so painful. I know it hurts. I know it's causing so much trouble with your heart. It's so traumatic. In fact, you have to be thankful, you know? Why? Because those going through this or deal in their marriage, you know what? Ang babae ba ba, ang inalay ba, you know? Nakikita ko, mas sexy sila. Oh, kung nasa ilang konsumisyon. They're thin, and they don't have to spend money. Yeah, yeah, tinood, not joking. Niwang sila. Wala silang exercise. Nandun ba ba, nandun ba ba, konsumisyon, hindi niya ako pastor. Wala kini yung mga, ano, 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 but uh, let me close with this. Allow God's crazy love to renew, to restore, and rekindle your married love. Can we do that? Can we do that? Not with our own strength, but by the grace of God. Amen? Choose to forsake the past. You don't have to, you don't have to bring the past to the present. Choose to forgive the person. Forgive the person. But pastor is going to do this again. Yes, and then forgive him again. Because that's the same forgiveness that God is giving you and me. Amen? And then choose to forget the pain. Cry over it. And then stop. Enjoy your life. Because you are loved by God. So choose to start over again. Amen? All love stories can start over again. Okay? So this time, we are going to sing the song. Right? Are you ready? Do you know the song? Okay, who will be the singer? Where's the tricks? Okay, who will? What's the first line? Okay, ready? And when I hold you in 
and downs. You know our struggles, you know our joy. Father, may each of our marriages, oh God, truly experience the renewal and the restoration that comes from the grace. Lord, protect these marriages. I know, Lord, it's the goal of the devil to destroy marriages. But Father, we pray that Satan nor his angels, they could not touch this married couple who are here. That you are going to surround them, Lord, with your love. Lord, I pray that husbands and wives will love each other all the more. And Lord, if we fall, if one would fall, Lord, we want to assure them that you are the God who forgives. That you are the God who grants revival in marriage. Give them the grace to forgive each other of God. Strengthen their marriage, Lord, by having that faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ alone. He is the foundation. He is the stronghold of our marriage. May our marriage, O oh God, be founded in the Bible. And I pray, O oh God, that blessings upon blessings be showered upon our marriage love. In Jesus Christ's name we ask all these things. Amen and amen. Let's be clear about our offering. Amen.
so much for your love. Thank you so much, O Father God, for just blessing us. And Lord, for you being a part of those blessings, Lord. Lord, this is yours. Use it mightily, use it as you will. Guide us as well, O Father God, in the decisions that we're going to make in our days as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Think about us now, think about us good and think about Tonight, I pray that you will acknowledge the repentance 
of your people, Lord. Lord, we want to repent of all our sins. We want to let go of that lifestyle of immorality, that lifestyle of self-centeredness, materialism, that lifestyle of unpleasing life to you. We want to please you. We want to honor you. We want to honor that covenant love that you have for us. And so, Lord, we choose to move on. We choose, Lord, to forget the past, forsake the negatives of the past, and pursue your love. Thank you, Father, that tonight you offered us your forgiveness and mercy. Thank you, Lord, that we can start all over again. That you are the God of new beginnings. That you're the God of renewal. We can make the beginning of God knowing that you are there with us. Father, I pray for those people, Lord, from tonight, open their hearts to receive Jesus. Some of us here, you want to start a relationship with God. You want to start a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. You want to receive eternal life. Then believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive Him now. Welcome Him in your life. Because He loves you so much. He wants to bless you. He wants to transform you. He wants to give you an abundant life. Receive that offer tonight. Say something like this, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and because of my sin, I deserve punishment. But thank you so much that you substituted me on that cross. Instead of me, you died on that cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you paid the price for my sins. Forgive me. Now, I want to receive you in my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I want to receive the eternal life that you promised to those who believe in you. And Lord Jesus, help me live this new life by obeying you every single day of my life. Father, bless your people, especially those who are kneeling. They have special concerns. Some of them renewing their commitments to you. Lord, some of them will be leaving soon. Lord, be with them. Be to them, Lord, according to their needs. I'd like to pray a special prayer right now for Ginger and Jai Jai and their two kids as they will leave for the States tomorrow. Father, we are sad to say goodbye to them, but we have other plans for them. Bless them, be with them, Lord. Provide them a good church that they can join. That they may grow. They may grow, Lord God, in their spiritual life. They may serve you as they have been serving you. Protect them, Lord. Bring them back, Lord God, safe, according to your life. And for all of us, as we depart from this place, I pray for God's best for you this week. God will protect you, God will bless you, God will prosper you, God will answer your needs, God will be there when you need them. And so serve Him with your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Now and forever, Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank <laughs> you. 